Welcome to the Mirror of the World and I'm excited that you are able to join us today. My name is Buki Adeoshun and I'm your regular host on this program. Before we start, I'd like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word tonight. Lord Jesus, we want to see you in your word. We want you to show us what you want us to see in your words today not what we want to see your will lord not our will lord i ask that whatever you show us in your word today as you show us the personality of god who god is i ask that whatever we see will be written in our heart so that we can increase in the knowledge of you and in the knowledge of god and I ask by the power of the Holy Spirit that our lives will be transformed into whatever we see in God's word today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, once again, I welcome you. We are starting, starting a new book today, the book of Hebrews. Uh, we have finished reading the book of Matthew. What an amazing an amazing book um, in the Bible. So I want to encourage you to go on our YouTube channel and watch all the videos that we did on the book of Matthew. There's no way I will be able to do a recap with regards to uh, the book of Matthew because I've got quite a lot to cover today. Uh, this book that we are about to read today, in order for you to understand it, I want to recommend uh, that you should go and watch the series that we did on the tabernacle uh, we started we did a video series from the book of exodus chapter 19 right to the end and uh, the lord prompted us to read that you know when i came across i came across a particular verse there where uh, moses said uh, if your presence not go with us then we will not go and uh, you know i was just curious and the lord said you really want to know then go and read the story and then from there uh, the Lord led us to do a study on the tabernacle. So the book that we are about to start today, I will try as much as possible to be able to paint the picture. Uh, but the truth is, if you don't understand uh, the, uh, the Levitical orders, if you don't understand the ministry of the priest under the Old Testament, you don't understand the tabernacle, uh, you don't understand what it stands for and what the priest were supposed to do in it, uh, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to understand the book of the Hebrews. But hey, uh, there's nothing to worry about because I believe that the Holy Spirit will open our eyes to see what God wants us to see, you know, as we read this book. One thing that I must say to you is that I want you to have a new mindset. You know, it's something that as I was preparing for this uh, uh, this video, uh, the Lord ministered to me that every time we read the scripture now, we need to begin to read with a mindset to see Jesus. We need to begin to read to see the person of Jesus in the scripture. You know, because the whole Bible, I'm telling you the truth, the whole Bible is about Jesus, you know, right from the book of Genesis, right to the, uh, the book of Revelation. So, and we're going to see that today. So, I want to invite you, let's read the first chapter uh, of the book of Hebrews and um, I want you to do me a favor please get your Bibles because we're going to be reading it together uh, what I use the word Bibles because I expect you if you have been following uh, following us on this video I expect you to be reading more than one translation of the Bible because we we don't want to be baby Christians uh, we want to be people who want to receive the fullness of what the Lord has for us so uh, we're going to be reading the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and uh, today I am going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. God who at sundry times and in diverse manner spoke to us in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed here of all things by whom also he made the worlds. 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he had had by inheritance obtain a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bring in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, Who make his angels spirit? and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old, wax old as dot a garment. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, thy years shall not fail. Wow. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirit? Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Now, um, I, I want to keep to my note. I just pray that the Spirit of God will help me today. The first thing we can say right there is that uh, the Bible says, right there in the book of the writer of the book of Hebrews, uh, there, there's no uh, there's no agreement with regards to who the writer of the book of Hebrews is. Something, uh, some thought is Paul, some thought is Barnabas. You know, but let's not get into that. But the first thing I I can say right there is that you know he said to whom of the angels or to whom of the prophets, you know, have God said uh, uh, has God said at any point in time, this is my son, and that's the main thing as far as the uh christianity our faith you know that's the main thing uh the reason why all other people are quarreling and they are fighting you know i i, I know a little bit about the, the quran you know the main contention is you know god has no son you know that's that's the main contention you know and that's the truth we shouldn't argue with anyone that say god has no son because they don't understand all the people they are following, they are prophets and all those people, God has never at any point in time told those people, you are my son. And this is what we are reading in the book of Hebrews here. He said, at no point in time did God tell anyone apart from Jesus. You know, um, we saw when John the Baptist, when uh, he baptized our Lord Jesus Christ in the in the book of Matthew chapter three, we 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 read the accounts that you know a voice came from heaven and said, "This is my son, my beloved son." He said, "Hear ye him, listen to him." So it's only Jesus that God said that to, and we can read that clearly in the book of Hebrews. Now, now I've captioned this video, "Kiss the son, lest he be angry." You know. Um, you and I know that when you want something, um, and um, you know you're not, you don't know the person who has got what you want, uh, but you know somebody who knows <laughs> the person who has what you want, then you have to be good friends to that person. You know, you have to, because you know that if you know somebody who's got the ears of the king, then you have to be friend to that particular person. So it's important for us because Jesus has got the ears of God. You know, we're going to see later on because he's the only one sitting at the right hand of God. Now, the reason I'm coming to us this way is that um, we we try to, when it comes to Christianity, people think 
what Christianity is about, about is about miracles. To be honest with you, and I'm going to tell you the truth, um, you, you don't need to come to church. You don't need to believe Jesus to, to get a miracle. Are, are, you, are you listening to me? You know, um, my forefathers, you know, uh, they, they, they worship idols, you know, into, into all these kind of occultic things and, you know, they can do wonders. So, for example, uh, there are people who they call rain makers, you know. <laughs> so, I'm telling you the truth, they can call rain on you. Uh, you have to, in some certain communities, if you got a so, if you have a social function, I mean, some people who understand, who are watching this video, please, if you have heard the story of your witness, you tell me, they will have to go and pay them homage. We want to do a social activity, please. Can you help us shut up the heaven so that it's not going to rain? You know, people can... You, what about the magicians? So, uh, Christianity is not about miracle. And the right time we get that, you know, the better for, love of, of, for all of us. Christianity is about knowing Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, I came to give them eternal life. And what's eternal life? It's, uh, eternal life is that they know him. That they know God and his son. So, Christianity is about knowing Jesus. Without knowing Jesus, you can't know God. Without knowing the person of Jesus, you won't know God. You can't get close to God. Uh, if, if you live in the environment where I live, you know, why Why should you believe God for money? They've got their life plans, you know. There's the mortgage system there for you. You can get a mortgage. You know, the houses are there. You don't, you, there's no encouragement for you to believe God for a miracle. If you understand, the only time they remember that there is God is when they get to the hospital. I mean, the hospital is free. You have the best of the treatment. It, the only time they think about God is, look, that when they get to the hospital and then they say, doctors say, okay, we give you three months to pray, uh, three months to live. That's when people begin to pray. And then they say things like, as he come to prayer. As he come to prayer. But Christianity is about you knowing the person of Jesus. So the Bible is the story of Jesus. We must read the Bible to see Jesus. I'll say that again. We must read the Bible to see Jesus. Every time from the book of Genesis, you know, we need to read the Bible with the mindset to see Jesus. We need to begin to read the Bible in a different way to begin. Okay, now I understand. So this is the meaning of this. You know, we, we, we read in Luke chapter 24. After Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he met some people and he was walking together with them. And they were concerned. He said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thought he was going to be king, you know, and they killed him. And Jesus was angry with them. And what did he do? The Bible says in verse 27 that he quoted them passage after passage from the writings of the prophets, beginning with the book of Genesis, going right on through the scriptures, explaining what the passages meant and what they said about himself. I'm telling you the truth. Noah's ark was about Jesus. Uh, in the beginning, uh, God said, uh, 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 let there be light. It was about Jesus. When you go right through the Old Testament, the prophecies, they were pointing to Jesus. The tabernacle, the worship, you know, and every ordinances, they were pointing to Jesus. And that's, that's what we're going to be seeing in this book of Hebrews. Now, Jesus is the lawful owner of everything. You know, um, <laughs> this is amazing because um, everything, everything was created by him. Verse 2 says, um, it, it says that uh, he, has been, he has been appointed. God appointed him the heir. I'm reading from the Amplified Translation. And the lawful owner of everything. Jesus has been appointed as the heir and the lawful owner of everything. And by him, all things were created. You know, that's why Psalm 2 verses 11 to 12 says, Serve the Lord with reference fear. Serve the Lord with reference fear. Rejoice with trembling. 
fall down before his son and kiss his feet. Now, let's look at that. Uh, you remember that Mary Magdalene, you know, he broke an alabaster box of oil, pour it on Jesus, wipe her feet, you know, uh, with her ears. Can you see that? He, he kissed the son, love Jesus, be loyal to him. Uh, that, you, you, is the best thing that can happen to anyone. You know, I, I was just thinking, I just pray in the church of today, the way members are loyal to their pastors, uh, the way members are loyal to the general overseers, the way members are loyal to the bishop, I just pray, I wish that we will be loyal to Jesus like that. Now, you believe God for a miracle. The Lord gave you a wonderful child. The way you are committed to keeping that child, to raising that child, I, I just wish that you will be committed to Jesus like that. You know, uh, so, some of us, we can travel miles to go to work. Uh, some of us, we are more than happy to do extra hours. You know, your boss is not even asking you if you can do an overtime, but you just want to do it so that you can tell your boss, you want to show to your boss that, look, I respect you, I love you, I value you. Look, the best person you can demonstrate your loyalty to is Jesus. And and I'm going to tell you it's simple. The, the reason for that is simple. Um, Jesus has a throne and his throne is forever. Verse 8 says, But unto, his, unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of of your kingdom the scepter the rule in the kingdom of our lord jesus christ is fairness is is um uh <laughs> he he the bible says that he hates iniquity i mean we, we see there the lord hated iniquity the lord hated injustice that's why god has anointed him with oil of gladness above his fellow so what I'm saying about is that, uh, what I'm talking about is this. Uh, some of us, uh, we have best leaders, you know. Uh, you have the president of a com country. I tell you the truth, apart from an African country where people kind of stay there forever. And then after that, they, they will hand over to their son. Um, even, even if they do that, they can only live for so long. But hey, before you were born, Jesus has been when you were born he continues to be after you are gone <laughs> you are gone jesus will still be there that's why the scriptures say in this same book of hebrew we'll see jesus christ the same yesterday today and forevermore you know his throne there is no limit there is no end to his throne okay now you you were faithfully committed to your boss and, and, and look 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 I, I thank god for your life that is a good thing um you faithfully committed to your pastor to your church thank god for your life that is a good thing um uh, you are faithfully committed to your husband your husband is the best thing that ever happened to you your wife is the best thing that ever happened to you thank god for your life but let me tell you something sir let me tell you something, ma. They will all pass away. Okay? After some time, your daddy will no longer be there. You wish that he was there, but he won't be there. But there is somebody that will never leave you nor forsake you. There's somebody that will never leave you nor forsake you. That person is Jesus. He has a throne and you are going to reign with him forever now let's look at it this way um in, in in the old testament worship in the tabernacle uh we have the tabernacle is made up of three parts we have the 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 outer court you know we have the holy place and then we have the holy of holy okay in the holy of holy that's the place where god wants all of us god specifically told moses he said look um he said you shall make the ark of the covenant he said, and i will speak to you from the mercy seat now in that holy of holy uh that place 
can only be entered once and for all. Uh, the high priest goes in there and then, you know, he offers sacrifices. He, he comes with the blood uh, as a kind of offering sacrifices, you know, uh, for the sins of the people. In that place, there is no seed. When Jesus Christ entered into the Holy of Holy in heaven, you know, because uh, 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 the whole Testament is a type and shadow of the New Testament. When Jesus entered into that place, you know, um, <laughs> the, 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 the blood in the Old Testament, every time you sin, uh, you know, kind of uh, the, <laughs> uh, some church folks nowadays, they behave, behave like the Old Testament, you know. Um, <laughs> after, after, after they believe God for something and then we get what we want, we have to beg them to come to church again. I thank God for your life because you are you are not one of those people. You understand what I'm saying? So in the Old Testament, uh, people don't show up until they've committed another sin. They don't show up until they need mercy. They don't show up or they, 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 they need some favor. They will come with their animals as a sacrifice and then they will present it to the high priest. Please, can you go and help me talk to God? But in the New Testament, there is no need for you to do that. You can go to God directly. So what Jesus Christ did was, when he enters the Holy of Holy, the Lord gave him a seat. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know, I'm so excited about these things that I want to say. So imagine uh, you want to go and see Her Majesty the Queen or you want to see the President of a nation. And then the person who is going to put a word for you. Because obviously the, the Queen didn't know you, uh, you know. And uh, but somebody, somebody who knows the queen and has got the ear of the queen, you know, uh, the person who is going to put in the word for you, uh, Her Majesty or President, Your Excellency, sir, this is the person that I'm talking about. Then something happened. The person is no longer there. Okay. But we were told that Jesus Christ, God gave him a seat. You know, after he has perfected everything. After he spoiled principalities and power, you know, after he defeated them completely, all the people who were going to trouble you, Jesus, not just in case, because he knew what the devil is capable of doing. He said, you know what? I know somebody is going to want to come and accuse these people that have paid the price for their sin. I, 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 I paid the price with my blood. So no one should accuse them again. God said, you know what? I'm going to give you a seed so that when they come with the blood, I expect you to say, yes, yes, sir, this one is coming under my blood. So give him whatever he wants. He is the only one. Jesus is the only one who has a seat. Prophet Elijah, you know, he did, uh, Elijah, sorry, did double the miracle of Elijah. Jesus is the only one that has a seat. And guess what? Um, he just didn't have a seed. We were told uh, uh, <laughs> in the book of Hebrews. This, this is what I love. That's that's why when 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 you see the person of Jesus in the Bible, it it will change your life. It will transform your life. The Bible says that you know we have a joint sitting with Him in the heavenly places. Oh, you you are a powerful person. I just pray today that you, you understand, you know how powerful you are. The Bible says that we have joint sitting with him in heavenly places. So I want to invite you today, come to Jesus. By Jesus, the foundation of the earth were laid. And those foundation, they are sustained. You know, verse 2 says, um, he says that he upholds all things by the power of his command. Uh, do you need some things to be stabilized right now in your life? Okay. How is the shape of your life? Is it shaking because of storms? Um... Are there things troubling you right now? I invite you to come to Jesus. All you need 
from Jesus is a word. That's that's why I love what the centurion man, I love what he did. Uh, the man said, look, all I need is a word from you. I, I, I tell you, you don't even need a word from me. You don't, you don't need a word. Uh, you don't need a word from the pastor, from the bishop. You know, I'm not discounting it down. I'm not saying don't get it. Don't, don't get me wrong. Please don't misquote me. But what I'm saying to you is that what you need right now is a word from the Lord. Uh, you, you've put yourself in a position where you can't even get that word. All you need is a word from the Lord. So why don't you ask him, say, Jesus, I need a word from you. I want to know you. Um, uh, you, you are a Christian, I know. I know you've given your life to Christ. You go to church 7 a.m. in the morning and in the evening. I'm talking to you today. I am not talking about outer court worship. You see, the outer court worship is a type of worship where they come and they meet with the priest. They give their offerings to the priest. You have been paying your tithes and offering to the priest. priest. And sometimes you complain. I just pray that the priests you've been giving your money to, they are not like the children of Eli. <laughs> when you go to the Bible, you see what the, what the children of Eli is like. I'm not going to tell you. Go and read it. But come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Tell him, say, Lord, I want to know you. Now I know. That I can't know God without knowing you. I want to know you. I want you to reveal yourself to me. Uh, Lord, uh, there seems to be some storm in my life. Now, I want you to send your word. I want you to speak a word. And I know that the storm will calm down. Let's pray for those who are sick. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Lord, I have revealed you to your people. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, as many as want to know you, Lord, reveal yourself to them. Oh, reveal yourself to them. Lord, show them your glory. Jesus, appear to them. Speak to them in a way that they will know that this is the Son talking to me. Lord, speak to them. Your word says that you have spoken to us in time past by prophets. You've revealed yourself to us here and there. But in these last days, you are speaking to us directly by yourself. Lord, you send your Holy Spirit so that your Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit, you send the Holy Spirit from the Father so that the Holy Spirit can take from you and then give it to us. Lord Jesus, I ask that your spirit, the voice of your spirit will be more real to us than the voice of people who are around us. I thank you for doing that. I pray for as many as are sick today. Thank you, Lord, for raising them up by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I give you praise. I bless your name, Lord. Thank you for that person with stomach problem watching right now. Uh, the person that's got cramp pains. Lord, I thank you because they are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Every abdominal pain, I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for it. Thank you for this miracle. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. I, I want to invite you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's where the journey starts from. That's where it begins. So you, have to, you have to confess him as your Lord and Savior. Invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I want you to come in my heart. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my master. I want you to direct the affairs of my life. I want to know God. You can't know God. You know, um, Jesus said that today, you cannot come to the Father except through me. That's the truth. Because he is the one that the Father has appointed as the heir. So if you are going to get anything from the Father, you have to get it from Jesus. You have to get it from Jesus. That's what the Bible says. So I want to invite you. You know, you know the, uh, we, 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 we said the Bible says that he is the Prince of Peace said, my peace I give to you, not as the world give. Lord, 
I speak peace into every heart that is troubled now in the name of Jesus. Now, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. I want you to do one more thing. I want you to get in touch with me. I'm going to send you some materials that is going to help you grow spiritually. Um, addresses are going to be on the screen shortly. Get in touch with us. I want to encourage you to find a fellowship that you can be part of. Uh, tell them, just walk into any church and tell them, I've given my life to Jesus Christ and I need all the support I can get for you from you. I bet you they will be more than happy to support you. If you want to be part of our fellowship, you are encouraged to be part of our fellowship. Uh, I want to invite you tomorrow is Sunday. We meet at Luton 9 to 11, 15 uh, a.m. We do Bible study. We're going to be starting um, a, a new Bible studies uh, on relationship tomorrow. Building relationship the last the first thing we're going to be looking at is a building relationship with god getting to know jesus uh, that's amazing if you can make it uh, join us for our bible study every friday is online 9 to 10 and then we do prayer meeting on tuesday may god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole keep you together put you together and keep you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who promised is completely dependable if he said it he will do it thank you so much for watching this video It's going to be available on youtube uh, shortly and i want to invite you to our youtube channel please subscribe to our channel so every time you are watching our video you uh every time we release a new video you'll be one of the first people to get an alert until I come your way with a fresh edition of the Mirror of the World, when we will be reading the book of Hebrews chapter 2. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.